We've brought water and sanitation services to more than one million people in the last 13 years. We as a Tewin Water and Sanitation Unit have been able to reduce a large number of illegal connections. We achieved a substantial reduction in the consumption of water, thereby ensuring a huge cost saving to the city. Our research has assisted in ensuring there have been no further outbreaks of cholera in our city. <laughs> Support from the population initially, I would say it wasn't good at all. In fact, the first times we went out and spoke to people, they were very aggressive and very angry and kind of criticized us. Uh, the staff came back saying, we don't like talking to our customers. Um, can we not do something, something different? And it was because the customers didn't understand our policies. And then we realised that we needed to engage with the communities and, and talk to them and get their views and explain our policies. Because that's what we learned. If you, if you do things without involving the communities, it will almost certainly fail. The city had these three different groups of customers. A million people in a first world city, a million people in the part of the city that had been neglected, and a million people with no services. And no exposure to things like toilets, flushing toilets, that kind of thing. And the one million without services in 2002 were hit with a cholera outbreak. And that's when the council really took notice of the problem and started investing heavily in, in sanitation. Until then we'd only invested in water supply, um, providing toilets. But the problem was that everybody wants a flushing toilet and the cost of a flushing toilet is just too high. And there are some very difficult decisions to make. There's a lot of poverty in our area. So any solution that we implement has to deal with poverty. It has to deal with job creation. How do we create jobs? Who gets those jobs? Where do we start the project? Who gets it first? The main objective uh, of the provision of basic services is to ensure that every citizen has access to water and sanitation in the, in the municipality. Uh, the provision of services, uh, we had the different levels of uh, services for communities living in rural areas, in the informal settlement in the peri-urban areas, and in the areas where social housing programs were rolled out. In the rural areas, each household received 200 litres of water via a ground tank, together with a urine diversion toilet. Hey.
Sajabulu Governor Matelet Angie Scottish name, Miss Ninkinga. Go along, get a shallow no lilling over in those who see Kula Bezibago take Namag Nenda or the Sisifuna Governor. Nam Sajas Letter La Matelet, Sikulu Legile, finally back Pella when I'm near as well, Nagel Tishali clean, Uli Valley, Linga Puril Ben Pugan, Sambora Kulu Hulmen. Mina e ami mi ya gayo zalo sengi na sixty three. Iska chesi ni inge so onke. Gisengi be na forty five. Bisi bisi samanza simpulen. Si banga kona ne inko mo na zonke into be loane puza mans. Begmelu vuxen. Kakuli loane zonke zinga kavu guzu thola mans. Obo uje ligu chena clean. In informal settlements, communities received water via a standpipe, which has now been changed to. Um, these community ablution blocks that has toilets and water at that uh, central point. The low-cost housing that is provided by the city, the level of service there is the roof tank. The tank is fitted on the roof with um, the waterborne system uh, toilets that have been provided. The toilets themselves um, are situated at the top of a hill and the open space has been used by an entrepreneurial person who firstly opened a shop in the vicinity and uh, then his son uh, placed a pool table in the open space and um, together the family maintained the toilets. Now, these various aspects have been taken into account in um, the further design of ablution blocks by having a paid caretaker who maintains the facilities in a very good, clean condition, it becomes acceptable for people to use and it becomes a, an acceptable public facility. Secondly, by having um, a shop, it starts bringing community around the toilet ensures that it is a safe place for children and women. This is the contact center where we meet and greet our customers. It operates 24-7. We have a toll-free number for the customers to contact us. Our primary purpose is to give the customer rapid responses to their problems. We capture the reports in a system and we issue the customer with a reference number. Okay, uh, could you say the system is down? Please stand by, I'll call you back. Okay.
nice to be here. Kumnandu Kumnandu It's nice to be here. We are going to be talking about water. Can I find out? Is there anyone of you today who washed himself or herself this morning? Yes. Did you all wash yourself this yes. morning? Yes. Okay. Did you go to the toilet this morning? Yes. Some went, some didn't. And then once you finish uh, going to the toilet and then you finish now, and what you must do now? Yeah. Wash your hands. You must wash yourself. Now you come here, and then you come here, and then you open here, and then you wash your hands. And then you wash your your hands. And then you wash your hands. your hands. Before you go to school, what do you do? What what else do you do before you go to school? Yeah, yeah. You wash yourself. So you wash yourself, you open the tap, uh, you open the tap like that, and then you go there and then you wash, and then you wash, and then you wash, and then you wash. But it's important then, once you finish washing, you must close the tap. You must close the so that you don't waste water. Our metro water, because our metro water is, is, is safe to drink. I would advise you to do what? Yeah, I will advise you to drink metro water. To drink what? Metro water. Because metro water is safe to drink. Metro water is? Safe to drink. So you don't have to drink water from rain. Please. Yes, if you are not in, in Devon, if you are outside, then we can drink water directly from, from rain. But here, please drink metro water 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 thank you thank you thank you today we are here to introduce the, uh, the street theater. One of the reasons we are using the street theater, we, want, we just want people to see the action. And then from that action, they have to learn. And by after learning, they will take the message back to their home. And after that, they will know where to report, where to find our offices. Because some people, they cannot concentrate for a long time. So that is why we are using the street theater. If people so color, Ikola <laughs> The education materials, the street theatre education campaign, all of these different interventions help to ensure that the, the, the education messages was uh, was taken uh, and, and internalized to ensure that there's long-term sustainability. Before drinking the water from the river, what are you supposed to do? Yes? You boil the water, is she correct? We normally say water is life. Can you also read this? Water is life. There 
was a need for us to be able to communicate with the members of the public. And it was after we had realized that uh, a lot of information was lacking when it came to disseminating it to the members of the public. As a Tewin Water and Sanitation, we have a lot of programs in place, such as the focus groups. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you all back here again. My question, uh, what I'd like us to add is uh, the leaks, water leaks in the different areas of Newlands East. Okay, uh, Cynthia, your, que your question, I think, as we all know, what is the policy with regards to leak within our municipality? And it, through engaging with these people in these forums, it is just uh, getting, coming together in a form of a meeting and these people help us a lot in terms of the policy formulation and when we have a new idea to test with them, we go to them to check if the idea can work. Uh, to make an example, right now as a Tewin Water and Sanitation, uh, we have a, fo a, a full time employed social worker and it was as a result of the advice of the focus groups from these uh, from these people I was here doing a household visit for for the car household that has been referred by a councillor this household didn't have access to water but because of the social economic status the management will be able to make a decision whether they do qualify for the debt relief scheme or not We decided to start what we call, we call the Raising Citizens Voice training, whereby we subdivided or we segmented the Tewin municipality into 17 zones. And uh, we, we involved the councillors, the ward committees, the civil society organizations, and the ordinary members of the public. Um, today, we've got a meeting with uh, councillors, ward committee members, as well as civil society organization representatives. They are all community representatives. Uh, we meet them on a quarterly basis uh, to discuss issues relating to water and sanitation that affects their communities uh, where they live. We have succeeded in, in immensely to ensure that we get information out to the members of the public uh, through the electronic media uh, use and also through the print media use. And we have not limited ourselves only to, to those uh, uh, forms of media. We even use the social media. So in a way, one would say it is as a result of our approach to ensuring that the members of the public are involved in our activities, that we have been able to reach out to all of the members of society and for them to recognize that this is their own organization. We've brought politicians and civil society together to have a common understanding of what we're trying to do and that has enabled us to accelerate the provision of water and sanitation services. A number of customers are now on debt relief and because of that their accounts are regularized. We have found that there is an increased level of satisfaction in the provision of services for the poor. We have rolled out the Raising Citizens Voice training program throughout the entire municipality. We have empowered our citizens with a lot of knowledge and we have made sure that they have become part and parcel of our decision-making processes. Through the education in initiative, we achieved a substantial reduction in the consumption of water, thereby ensuring a huge cost saving to the city. By providing these awareness programs to schools, they have helped to reduce the spread of waterborne diseases such as diarrhea. We've had more than 600 performances with the street theatre and we, are, we have been able to reach more than 35,000 people which are adults and 45,000 uh, learners from different schools. I don't know of any developing countries that face uh, unlimited resources so we're all in the same boat. We all are short of money and skills and those kinds of things. So we've learned that the solutions that you implement 
have to be affordable, they have to be realistic, they have to be services that meet the needs of the community. They may be not what they really want. I'm sure everybody would like a motor car and many people can only afford a bicycle. And the same goes for water and sanitation. Everybody would like taps in their houses and flushing toilets, then that's not realistic. And so we use education and awareness raising to bring ourselves and our customers together. So to me, that's what I would say to other people. Make sure that you bring your, your customers along with you, you keep them informed, and you'll find that the end result costs you less and works best. Thank you.